Take notes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're to find limits of integration. Oh, wrong marker. And we're in polars, so we're gonna have a radius bound and an angle bound. So we're not looking for x and y's, we're looking for angles and radii. So find limits of integration. for region bounded by r equals 1 plus cos theta. <coughs> uh, so we're outside, I should write that down, outside that curve. That's and in the, outside. the outside of the region is the first curve, the inside is the second curve. So I wrote outside and inside. <coughs> Does that mean R is less than one plus cos theta or greater than one plus cos theta? So let's think, which of those should I use? Right, of course, less than or equal or greater than or equal. Which one should I go for? It's not a choice, but what's the correct one of those? It's greater than. So we want to be further away from the origin than this curve. That's what it means to be outside. And then inside, the other one will do the uh, inequality the other way. So you're inside that circle when you're closer to the origin than the curve right there. <coughs> and if we line it up with the little, let's see, the little on the left, big on the right, you could write it out like this as well. <coughs> if you want to make a single inequality with representing both of them at the same time. All right, how do I figure out where these intersect? Find the equal two points. So we're going to use substitution on the equations, not the inequalities. So we're going to go back to the equations, use substitution, and solve for uh, what r's and what theta's make them uh, equal. So that's the first thing we'll do. I'm going to move the screen over. We're going to find intersections. <coughs> All right, one minute, figure it out. Cos theta is zero, so it's either pi over two, negative pi over two, or add two pi k to any of those. Uh, in this situation, <coughs> I think I could write pi k here because they're both separated by pi, but just to be safe, um, I'll write it like this. We're gonna pick two adjacent ones, so if I write them out on a number line, I know that thetas are spiraling, but if I write them on a number line, I have, I'll just start at negative three pi over two, negative pi over two, positive pi over two, and three pi over two. I remember doing something very similar when we were doing polar integrals before. We had to figure out which function is on the top, which one's on the bottom. So they're equal at these theta values. We have to decide which one's on the top, which one's on the bottom. So I think the easiest interval would probably be if we have the right one on the top and bottom, I'm going to hope for negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. If that doesn't work, my next choice is move one to the right. So I'm hoping my interval will be this right here. But I have to make sure I'm inside one of those and outside the other, not the opposite way. So how do we figure out what function is bigger between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2? 
we're going to pick a point in between. I'm going to switch to blue. This is a choice I'm making. I can pick any number in between. So I'm just picking the easiest one I can think of. So I have to figure out which, when theta equals zero, which function is on top. So our cosine function is bigger. Is that <coughs> the situation that we wanted? Should our cosine function be bigger? Nope, it should be the exact opposite. Our cosine function should be smaller. So we're gonna choose, you have a choice of which of, I can move either direction and choose the interval, but I'm gonna keep it positive. So I'm gonna go to the pi over two to three pi over two, as opposed to the negative uh, negative 3 pi over 2 to pi over to negative pi over 2. So any, this function, the reason I can choose uh, either is because the function's periodic. So it's going to have the exact same situation happening every uh, 2 pi it repeats. So let's forget this and we're going to instead try right here. What's a good value to check? Pi. So same exact thing, let's hope that the cosine function is small this time. So our cosine function gives us zero. The other function is always one, so this is the right order here. So our interval is pi over two to three pi over two. Question? Uh, so are we choosing those like interval numbers to be one apart because our r equals one? No. We're choosing them to be, well, they're pi apart, but the reason that they're pi apart is because of our theta solutions to our original system. So it may have been that it was plus minus pi over six, in which case the intervals would be very different sizes. Even though they would alternate, it would be like a big interval and little interval and a big and a little. It was coincidence that the spacing was perfectly even. Maybe, hopefully in the homework. I'm pretty sure we did an example uh, in polar, right when we first did polar coordinates. I'm pretty sure we did an example where it was not, where things were not evenly spaced. And it's actually very easy to create that problem. I think if you go r is one half, if you just look what would happen if I put a half in here, then I would, I still have a solution, but it would not be uh, plus minus pi over two. So it'd be pretty easy to change this problem to give us a non evenly spaced interval. And that's one change right there you could make. So I think we're pretty much ready to write this integral. I'm going to rewrite the polar integration. I didn't write the function. Now we're trying to So we'll just find the area of this region. So I don't, I'll just put a, a height one function over it. have a double integral. We do have one inside, but there's always an r dr d theta. So you always get that extra r whenever you have a polar integral. Which bounds am I doing first, r's or thetas? So we're going to let's do the inside first. So the inside bounds are r's. The reason I lined up the triple inequality will probably be pretty clear right now. It helped us out a minute ago. It's also going to help us right now. So you can exactly see r is greater than or equal to 1 plus cos theta. And it's going to be less than 1. So that should be very clear why I wrote the inequality out. 
Right. Yeah, you can also I I could write the equivalent statement like this, but at least for me, this seems a bit strange. You could write it like that, but you're writing it as an interval where one endpoint's a function, so it usually looks a little more scary. So I'll keep it to the one on the left. All right, what about thetas? So that was the work we just did. That was actually the harder part, was figuring out those thetas. Normally that's the easy part, but in this case that actually took quite a bit more work. So that's our pi over 2, the 3 pi over 2. So this antiderivative, super easy, antiderivative r, r squared over 2, plug in endpoints. Yes, you will have a cosine squared, but I think you've done enough integrals so far, you can handle a cosine squared, no problem, that's the power reduction formula unless it's like right next to a sign, in which case it's a u sub. So you've done enough trig integrals that I'm just going to leave this uh, right here. <coughs> so now we're going to look at uh, an area enclosed by a region, or enclosed by a single uh, equation. So let's think about this function right here. R squared is equal to 4 cos 2 theta. <coughs> I could solve this for R, but the only problem is I'm going to get a plus minus if I do so. So I can't solve all the way for R. So the best I can do is get a plus minus value for R. So we'll get 2 square root cos 2 theta. So I think we all agree a positive value will never equal a neg negative value. Except for what number would that not be true for? Zero. So if r is zero, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative on the right side. It would still be zero. And if we look a little closer at the right side, can I get, <coughs> forget about the plus minus, can I get a negative value out of this part? So I'm square rooting, so there's no way to get a negative value out of there. So what that tells me is this expression here on the right side is always positive or always negative? It's positive. Well, or negative. But the point is, <coughs> it'll either be positive or negative. The only time you will have two different theta values to give you the same r is if your r is zero in this situation. So that's the reason I'm going to set it equal to zero. So that's kind of tricky on this problem. Uh, there's another r value for sure that it will repeat. We know the function is periodic. We have to be a little careful. What's the period? If you look at the original, what's the period of this? It's not 2 pi. Why is it just pi? What does... So multiply by 2, that's a horizontal compression of... Uh, half basically, so that's why our old period was two pi got uh, crushed down to one pi. So that's what you're looking at right here. So our period got uh, compacted to half its size. So it seems like our interval length should be pi, or maybe something a, a little smaller. <coughs> so let's set this equal to zero. See what we get. for this to be 0 is cos 2 theta equals 0. And I'll draw the unit circle to figure this out. Cos is 0 at the top and bottom. The only problem is what I wrote down are two theta values, not theta values right here. So 
So that means regular theta will be pi and negative pi. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was a little bit worried. It shouldn't have gone past 1 pi, the difference between the first and the last points. Now there's another issue. Cosine 2 theta can be negative for quite a few theta values. But what happens if cos 2 theta is negative in our function here? Complex number or imaginary number. Uh, what would be happening up here is no solution. So if the right side's negative, there's no r value, no real r value that squares to be negative. There's complex r values that square to be negative, but not real ones. So we have to make sure cos 2 theta is not negative. Isn't that uh, an even function now, cosine? Wouldn't it negative just go away? This cosine is even. Mm -hmm. Uh, rotating either way would be the same thing, but cosine is still negative. At, uh, let's see, pi to 2 pi. Okay. When you're on the bottom half of the unit circle. Okay. No, it's sine. The left half of the unit circle, it's negative. All right, so we're going to try negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 4. <coughs> is our function going to be defined in this interval? Or are we going to have the problem where it is imaginary? <laughs> it will be defined. So our function will be positive. Yes, sir. Um, quick question about it. Is this section not going to be on the quiz? Not going to be on tomorrow's quiz. Yeah. But everything up to it. Yeah. Same rules apply. Okay. So we have our theta, <coughs> let's we'll line this up in integral, double integral we want the area, so this is just one, r dr d theta. I do not have an inequality here, <coughs> let's write down inequality. So I really had two different equations, I did write both equations down with a plus minus. So let's think about how those two equations are going to form an inequality. So we get r equals negative 2 square root cos 2 theta and the other bound is r equals positive 2 square root cos 2 theta. What two functions is r going to be between if we're inside? going to be between these two functions right here. So it's going to be greater than or equal to the negative version and less than or equal to the positive version. And that comes from, if you think area enclosed by, so whatever type of shape we're going to get, maybe it's a cardioid, maybe some other weird shape, what does it mean to be enclosed? I just partitioned two-dimensional space into two parts. Here's part one, everything else is part two. So what part are we talking about? Part one. So enclosed means the interior of the curve. So that's what uh, enclosed means. You're taking the inside part. What area would part two have? Greater. It would certainly be greater. It would be infinity. So if there's an unenclosed region, it's going to be unbounded or infinite area. All right, so we're looking for this area. That's the reason we want to be basically smaller than the positive one and bigger than the negative one. <coughs> so all we're going to do is set up our inequalities. We're going to be greater than that negative 2 square root cos 2 theta and greater than the positive 2 square root cos 2 theta. All right, any questions on setting up those inequalities? So our last problem had interior ex or inside outside, which told you about inequalities. This one has enclosed by, which is the same as saying inside of. So those are our R boundaries. So we go negative, we on the bottom, negative two, 
square root cos 2 theta and 2 square root cos 2 theta what about theta values so we already did that work negative pi over 4 to pi over 4 so basically you're doing a trig trigonometry solving a system of equations it should be at most two equations and hopefully it won't get any worse than a quadratic in uh, trig functions. So I think we only saw linear functions in trig, it looked like. Yeah, our functions were linear, like that guy right there, 1 plus cos theta equals 1. So they'll most likely be a linear function in trig. So integrating this, it looks kind of rough, but it's not bad because you integrate, you get r squared, and that's going to nicely cancel out that square root. So it'll plug in and be a relatively painless integral. So you won't have to use some crazy advanced tricks on this one. Why does this question <coughs> look very different than the others in this section? So I took a rectangular equation and put it in the polar section. So that's either a mistake or there's a reason I did it. Let's think about what we're looking at. <coughs> what shape will this graph have? It'll be a semicircle. So go ahead and get rid of the square root and get x and y on the same side. And when you have this sorted out, graph it also. Questions on the region. So we've got the half circle. It's the upper half circle because y had to be the positive square root, not the negative square root. That's why it's the upper half circle. And then our y equals one y equals zero. I don't know why I wrote one. Y equals zero is the bottom boundary of that. So we're looking at is easily described in polar coordinates. How would I describe this shape in polar coordinates? We can't say x squared plus y squared. We can't say anything with x's and y's in polars. You're looking at a rectangle. What is r between? Zero and one. And what about theta? There we go. Good question. So, as long as you're, are you okay with the theta, yeah. right there? So think about windshield wiper. If you if you just put, pick one point in your radius and then turn on your windshield wiper, it's like smearing a bug across your windshield. So if you want to clean your whole windshield, you have to go from zero to one and then sweep across. Oh, that's a good question. So why is it one and not two, or some other number? Yeah, that came from right there. So these are I'm probably disproportionately using zero and one like too much, but don't always assume there's zero and one, but we use the unit circle a lot, so the numbers are nicer. Mm -hmm. 
No, I think I did say y equals 1, but I meant 0. So we have the region right here. I could write it out as 0, 1 cross 0 pi. That's our polar rectangle written out right there. So we got our radius and then our theta interval crossed. So that turns into the polar rectangle. So I have the bounds. They're not so bad. So I'll just start writing here. We get e to the x squared plus y squared r dr d theta. So r was 0 to 1, theta was 0 to pi. What is not going to work well in this integral I wrote down? So I'm mixing things together. So we're basically doing u substitution. We're changing variables. The tricky thing is we're changing both variables at the same time. So we're really doing a double u substitution, which you'll learn way more detail next quarter. So I'm not going to go through all the detail. What's happening behind the scenes, there's a Jacobian that's happening. You can, you can look that up if you want to. You may have heard that before. It's how volumes or areas change as you change coordinates. Uh, for us, the Jacobian is R right now. It's a determinant of a matrix that I don't want to go into. How in the world can I get x squared plus y squared out of here and replace it with some r's and some thetas? You know, do you remember back to pre-calculus 2 class when you changed coordinates? We already changed coordinates right here. Nobody had any problems though. Probably because we were changing into a rectangle, so it was easy. How does x squared plus y squared relate to r and or theta? So there's four uh, identities you need to know. So here's one. r squared is x squared plus y squared. x equals r cos theta. y equals r sine theta. And y over x equals tan theta. That was pre-calculus, too. <laughs> that was beers ago. So we have e to the r squared. So I just took out x squared plus y squared, replaced it with r squared. Remember, when you have power to the power, you have to use parentheses because it's ambiguous. You have to know if it's e to the r squared or e to the r squared. Those are not the same. So you need to use uh, parentheses here. How in the world will we integrate this? This does not look easy. I didn't, but that's how you do it. I did say use of, that was, not, that was in how we got here. That's also how we're going to go forward. What what is a good choice for you? R squared. So our du is 2rdr. And we're going to move the 2 to the other side as a 1 half. All right, so there's your u substitution. So I think that'll be enough to for you guys to finish this off. It's once you get e to the u, du, that's the easiest antiderivative. It's e to the u. Just careful with your endpoints. Remember, when you make a u sub, you have to either change your endpoints or change the variable back before you plug them in. So you do need to be careful when you make a use of with endpoints. the volume this time of a solid bounded above. 
my z equals 9 minus x squared minus y squared and below by the unit circle. So we're not finding an area, we're finding a volume. So we did find volumes before. What they look like, it was, it was a double integral of a function of x, y, and either dx, dy, over our region. So this was our volume formula right here. So we're going to be using the volume. So I'm going to be lazy and just write unit circle for our region down there. Uh, our function is 9 minus x squared minus y squared. And I can either go dx dy or dy dx. Alright, unit circle I could do in rectangular coordinates. So I think we wrote out the unit circle before, but just in case you forgot from three minutes ago. So plus or minus square root of uh, one minus x squared. So the positive is the top half of the circle, the negative is the bottom half. So we can fill in the actual bounds on the circle. That should be an x coordinates. So I've already finished my algebra. I don't feel like going back. So what can I do to change this? So if I just swap the order, everybody should be happy. All right, what about the, so that takes care of y's. What about x's? I'll draw a unit circle real quick. What is our x bounds when we go across unit circle? negative one to one. So that's just minimum maximum that you are going to see. All right, so that is laid out in uh, rectangular coordinates. And you can probably integrate this. It's going to be annoying when you have your y cubes and you're plugging in square roots. So it's going to be really ugly after your first integral. This is not going to be a fun problem to do. Let's see if we can switch to polars instead. It seems like this is doable. I don't really feel like doing it, but it seems like it would be possible to integrate. But it's really not easy after the first step. So let's go into polars. So how does our function change? We'll look at that again. I'm going to write it as 9 minus x squared plus y squared. So that x squared plus y squared is r squared. So our new function is 9 minus r squared. The price we have to pay is we pick up an extra r, dr d theta. Do not switch dr d theta order. It's not this quarter. So r dr d theta. What is the bounds for r? Zero to one. What about theta? Zero to two pi. So we need to fill the entire circle, which is also the unit I would call it the unit polar rectangle. So you do all angles from 0 to 2 pi. It's a full rotation. You don't want to go negative 1 to 1 on your radius because you would basically count, you'd sweep out your circle twice of that, that way if you went negative 1 to 1. So you don't want to do that. You really want to keep your radius positive whenever possible. Don't use negative radii. All right, that should be an easier integral to do. Your endpoints look very friendly. It's just a polynomial. Careful with your powers, it should be very easy to integrate this thing. So we have one more problem to do. So 
the area of a region enclosed by x squared plus y squared equals 4 above the line y equals 1 and below the line y equals square root 3x. So take a minute, sketch the region out. That square root function is a linear function, just the square root on the 3, not square root on the x. So it's a line with a weird slope. But it was picked carefully, so it worked out. questions on our uh, circle. All right, so we're going to be above the horizontal line and below the diagonal line. So I think that leaves exactly this little wedge. If you're also inside, you got to be inside the circle too. So this is the area we're trying to find. Unfortunately, it's not, it's almost a wedge of a circle, but it doesn't go all the way to the center. So I can't just take the area and divide it by basically the portion of the ankle. So I can't do that. So we're going to have to do this very carefully and find the area. So type 1 or type 2? I better flip back. I always forget. This has to be one of the two. This is not a region that can go either way. So this is a distinctly one or two, not both. So it looks like I think we have to go type 2. The type 2 picture I've drawn is something like this, and I know it kind of looks like a boot. So it's got flat on the top and bottom. So we don't have a flat vertical side, so I can't do type 1. So we've got to go 2. So type 2, we had a left function. I used g of y on the left. And on the right, I did f of y. So actually, g of y equals f of y. All right, so we need functions of y. If I write these out, x squared plus y squared. equals 4, and our y equals 1, and the other one is y equals square root 3x. So let's line up our double integral. 1, d, let's see. This is a type 2, so it's dx, dy. So that's important to get which of the types so that you get the order correct. All right, so I need two functions of y. So what is my little function of y? Is it in the left or the right? And I can't, it makes sense to use some green on the edges here, because there are two edges that don't consume all the edges, basically. Like there's at least one edge. It's not one of the two battery edges. And I intentionally did not connect them at the top so we can see they are connected, but this way I can talk about left and right when there's, it's a little obvious that they're not the same. All right, which one is the big? The one on the right. So let's solve that. We need to solve it for x. If 
Uh, not for Y, solve it for X. So we got plus minus square root four minus Y squared. Do I choose positive or do I choose negative? Why are we going positive? Because we're in quadrant one, everybody's positive. Specifically, X was the coordinate that we were worried about, so we were on the right half. That's specifically why this was positive. Not because we're above the X axis, because we're on the right of the Y axis is why it was positive. All right, so that is our big bound. You can definitely have a negative bound. Sure. If you're going backwards. Three flip endpoints. All right, left. What is the equation for the left? I have y equals square root of 3x. You need to solve 4x. So that's easy to do. That's x equals 1 over square root 3y. Ooh, that's times y, not divided by y. And what about the x bounds? No, those are the x bounds. What about the y bounds? What's the minimum y? One. What's the maximum y? Wherever they cross. Doesn't look like it's going to be two, though. Close to two, but not two. So figure out the, we only really need the y corner at that point. You may find the x coordinate on the way, but at least find the y corner at that point. No, you don't have a right triangle. We don't even have a triangle. <laughs> it's not even, it's very hard. <laughs> it's triangular-ish, <coughs> but the Pythagorean theorem doesn't work on those types of blobs. <laughs> I squared it. Um, well, the square root All right, so our y value is square root three. So this should be a pretty straightforward integral. It's not super easy, but I don't think there's any weird tricks ahead on this integral right here. And if you look back up here, so we are close to two. I think square root three is 1.7 something, so pretty close to 2.